Tilad, welcome to studio. Thank you. South Africa's got a proud history of innovation around science and technology, but yet year in and year out, we're confronted with the challenge that we don't have enough scientists and engineers coming out. What is the reason behind that? About half a million people wrote metric, and only 50% of those wrote mathematics in its general sense, which means it's the core mathematics as well as what's called math, math literacy. And from those, only 50% passed. Now, if you look at science, only 30% of the students that wrote metric last year wrote science as a subject. And what's the underlying reason why maths and science are not being taken up at school level? I think part of it is perception. They're difficult subjects. So, you know, there's, there's always the tendency to go for the things that are easier to deal with. But I think a much more fundamental issue is the resourcing that we have at our schools, both in terms of the teachers, but also the infrastructure that is required. One challenge that we've seen in the country is that a lot of science graduates who make it through the university system eventually leave the profession of being engineers and scientists and become bankers and businessmen. For me, it highlights perhaps a structural flaw that we have, which is the mismatch between what the market requires in terms of skills and what our higher education institutions are producing that maybe there isn't enough of a dialogue to align the expectation to ensure that the people who come out of universities have the requisite skills that are required in the market. A lot of money has been spent on infrastructure and upgrading our power systems. We need the engineers, we need the scientists. How are we going to address those where there's got this shortage? Africa in general, we are bringing in teams of experts from the rest of the world to do projects in Africa when we have a number of our own people are unemployed. I read a recent report which was produced by the World Bank, the World Bank in partnership with Elsevier, which said that close to 50% of the population of Sub-Saharan -Sub Africa is less than 25 years old. And we know that we've got a huge unemployment issue of young people. Yet at the same time, we are bringing in skills from outside of Africa to do projects that we should be doing ourselves. Your company, Cecil, has in the past had many initiatives. If you can tell us some of the successful initiatives that you've undertaken. Companies like Cecil, and I'm sure others as well, are doing something similar. They have a critical role to play, in my view, in terms of skills development, because it cannot just be left to government to address this. Mm. Private sector needs to play a role. And, and maybe the role from private sector is informed, in my view, by by two objectives. One is a selfish objective of saying, you need to create the secret of supply for the skills that you require to support the program that you're trying to execute within your company. But I think added to that is a national responsibility that they carry to build capacity within the country. In Germany, where there's a period of apprenticeship out of universities, is that perhaps something that we could look at on the continent? I think institutions such as National Research Foundation should be working with the corporate sector to create opportunities for internships for all our graduates. Because I think that's something that could move the country forward in terms of ensuring that people, when they come out of universities, have the right skills, have been exposed to the place of work. And of course, as I said earlier, it makes them better employer. It makes them easier to be, to be employed. So we've got a number of new technologies, whether it be renewable energy, we're hosting the satellite in the country. How do we exploit those opportunities in science? Uh, the Square Kilometre Array, which is the project you're referring to, is a huge project, um, which I think will contribute largely towards skills development in the country, in the related disciplines, but also in terms of creating an economy that could supply into that whole sector that will be created as a result of this project. But we still have a lot of work to do of course. in terms of getting to the right level with regards to skills. And there are various programs which are trying to address that. In a recent report which was released by the World Economic Forum, they do the Global Competitive Index report, South Africa came number 56. In fact, South Africa was the only country in the top 60 of 144 countries out of the 50 odd, 54 odd countries that we have within Africa. Which in my view is an indication that Africa as a whole still has a long way to go. Yet on the other hand, if you look at other sectors such as information technology, we've seen some of the innovations that have happened in East Africa around banking and addressing some of the social problems that are faced in Africa. How do we take that and bring innovation more into the scientific realm to address some of the challenges that we speak of? 
we are seeing developments in, in very narrow areas. ICT is one of them. And I think we're doing fairly well there. In fact, if you look at, even if I go back to the, to the World Economic Forum report of South Africa, South, South Africa ranked number 34 in terms of innovation, which means we're making strides, but it, in, it is in very limited areas. Why I say this? If you look at South Africa's investment in research and development, it's currently 0.76% of our GDP. The world average is 1.3%. So although we're making progress, but it's in very narrow areas and it's very limited, it's not going to have the kind of impact I think that one wants to see. On that note, thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you.